Welcome back to our second episode of a new player um, leveling series. My name is M-Dog and we are playing Russian Fishing 4. I don't know if I even mentioned that in the last episode. Uh, okay, so today's objective is to go to copper. So a couple things before we go, actually quite a few things probably. Uh, first of all, if you're wondering, yes, I am still trolling on Volkov on the main account. Um, so we have five gold on this account now. Gold is on sale right now. If you wanted to get one gold, which would pay for two trips to copper, that would cost you currently USD $1.50. So it's about less than 75 cents per trip to copper. Just so you know. Uh, it's 25% off though. So normally it would be, what, 25% more than what I'm saying. So just over 50 cents for a trip to copper if you're trying to get an idea of what uh, this sort of like jump start would cost. Now this isn't just a jump start to get to like a really high level or to get a lot of silver, although that it, it will affect how quickly we're doing those things. It's also a jump start just to get into the most current content, which is Copper Lake, and to get into carp fishing, which for a lot of people, it's helpful to know like, am I even gonna enjoy carp fishing? Because I think I will, and I think that's worth me putting all of this time and energy into this game, but I'm not 100% sure this is a way for you to kind of test it out. And, uh, and see if you do actually enjoy it. And if you do want to put the time into, this is one of those lifestyle video games where um, you just don't have a lot of time to play other games. This is kind of your main thing. If you really want to immerse yourself uh, and go through the grind of it all, then this is probably takes over your gaming time in some ways, at least for the foreseeable future. So deciding is it right for you is a legitimate question. Now, one of the things is when we go on this trip, I want us to take full advantage of the time. So once we get there, I will likely get us fishing pretty quickly. So when we start the trip, I will be taking us to the right straight to 5660. That is a known spot. We're going to be going to a 10 meter clip. If I pull over the VK site, you see a lot of people at Copper post 5660 10 meter clip. Now, they're using large one hooks, they're using different boilies. Our setup's gonna be very different because the equipment that we're gonna get to rent as a brand new player going to Copper is gonna be, I don't know what hook size, we'll find out when we get there, but it's gonna be natural baits like potatoes and corn and that kind of stuff. We're not gonna have these fancy boilies. We actually can't fish with this stuff yet. We're not, we gotta be higher level in our bottom fishing before we can even equip it. So this first trip, we're gonna be severely limited, but I'm excited about that because I wanna see how good can we do? What can we figure out with those limitations? So that is, oh, I was gonna show you, you know, if you scroll down further, again, just more and more people posting at this top area, 5660, this one is 6162, which is right nearby, 5660. But it's going to pretty much all be on boilies or corn or that kind of stuff. Stuff we don't have, right? Okay, so let's talk about what we do have. In terms of equipment, we don't know exactly what we're going to have. But, you know, we'll have some sort of either picker or feeder rods. That's one thing I need to mention that we haven't mentioned yet. When you go to Copper Lake... First of all, you have to be level 29. We're level, what, five or something? But when you go there, there are restrictions on gear. You can't use carp rods. You can't use match rods greater than medium light. And you can't use spinning reels larger than 6,000. So the rented equipment that we're gonna get will be either feeder or picker rods, and it will be spinning reels that are 6,000 or 60 reels so that they're not restricted for Copper Lake. That's what we'll get with the trip. So let's look in the store real quick because I also want to talk about a couple things. I'm not sure exactly what the equipment will look like or what the hook sizes will be or what baits we're going to get. I just know that we will get all those things. I'm going to be discovering with you 
uh, exactly what that looks like. All right, let me pause this while the store loads. Okay, so as the camera focuses, I'm not sure what's happening to the camera. There we go. Again, it might be the screen, the background color or something. I'm not sure. Um, okay, so here's what I want to talk about before we actually start this trip. First, let's talk about baits. I don't know what baits we're going to get, but these are the baits that I hope we get. I know it says dough. So, like, for example, if we have semolina, I think we should try it. If we have cornmeal, try it. Garlic dough, maybe try it. Cottage cheese, maybe try it. Honey dough, definitely try it. Pearl barley, probably try it. You know, so some of these doughs, if we have them, I'm willing to try them. Those, those probably would be worth giving it a shot. Corn seeds, I definitely want to try it. So I'm tempted to purchase some, but I guess I'll just wait because I should have them in the store there at Copper. They're so cheap, but I think corn seeds could be really important to try. Uh, same with uh, cheese, maybe, but I meant to click on pea. I at least want to see if pea works. Um, potatoes, of course. Uh, potatoes could be important. Maybe even bread would be worth trying. So those are the main baits that I'm hoping we'll be able to try. We're not going to have boilies. I don't think they're even going to give us boilies, and we certainly can't use them because of our limited skill in bottom fishing. So the other thing I want to talk about really quick is ground bait. So let's first look at the basics to ground bait. Now, in the last episode, you saw me make the very basic ground crackers just by itself. This time, we're going to make something that's our own concoction. So we're going to get, we're going to spend a little bit of silver here on ground bait. Our only options, because we haven't leveled it up, we can only use, see how pearl barley says you have to have 15%. We can only use ground crackers or semolina. We're actually going to do semolina. So I'm going to buy three packs of semolina. I'm going to then go to additives. We definitely want millet porridge. So three packs of that, three packs of corn. And we can't do peas yet, which is unfortunately. We can do bloodworm, but I think I'm going to skip that. Let's do maggots. So three packs of maggots. And then we'll go to attractants. And I'm thinking vanilla. We could do sunflower caramel or vanilla. If we're using natural baits, sunflower oil might be the safer way to go. So I think I'm going to get one of each and we'll do one of each and see if like one works better than the other. You can use these five times so we, don't, we only need one of each or one of one of them anyway. So the real, real reason, reason I'm doing all this is I don't think the trip is going to give us any ground bait. But in my opinion, you want to be able to put something into the water to attract fish. We're going to be using basic bottom setups, kind of like the feeder rod that I showed you before. The only difference is we're going to have a little bit bigger hook. And instead of bread, we're going to have corn on there or something like that. So we want to be able to put something in our, our feeder, um, our mesh feeder some ground bait. I think this is how it's going to go. So let's go ahead and make the ground bait in advance. So we're going to call this, uh, we're going to call this carp one. We're going to call this carp one. We're going to call this carpone. We're going to call this carp one. <laughs> uh, we're going to do semolina, corn, maggots, millet porridge, and sunflower oil. Okay, now we're gonna call this, watch out, carp two. And the big change here is we're gonna put vanilla in this one. All right, so we've made two stacks of ground bait. 
So when I go to this and click on this, we have 50 portions. So for the first 100 fish, we have ground bait. And by the time we get to 100 fish, <laughs> the trip hopefully won't be over, but we'll have had time to go back and find some new ground bait, make some new ground bait. I don't want to t spend a ton of silver on leveling up ground bait and uh, bait harvesting on this first trip because I want to see how much can we realistically make in a first trip to copper when all we have are natural baits that they give you for the trip. That's sort of what I'm wanting to see here. So we're going to have five hours on this trip and this, this second episode will be our first trip and I'm trying to think if there's anything else we need to do. Okay, I thought of one thing we can do. Let's go through a little bit more of this guide before we get finished. We'll just do a little bit of a time at a time when I think about it on episodes. So first of all, there is a character status indicator. You see it in the lower left part of the screen. It shows we're level six and then it's got this. The top one is energy indicator, the player's energy reserves. Energy is needed for fighting fish, crafting, running, and other physical activities. The regeneration speed depends on the player's food level and comfort. Food may also affect the energy regeneration. So basically it's saying food, comfort, and energy all relate to each other or interact together. The second line is food, shows how hungry you are. There may be some bonuses besides giving you a full stomach. Some may raise other characteristics as well. It's very vague. The one thing we know for sure is that some types of alcohol affects how much XP you get per fish. So if you're catching a really nice trophy fish, you might want to take a celebratory sip of wine or, you know, a nice alcohol. The, uh, the other thing we know is that coffee, tea, um, cocoa, and then some sweet foods give you energy. It helps you regenerate energy faster. So let's say you're trying to dig for worms and it uses all of your energy up. You might want to take a sip of tea or coffee or something to get that energy back faster so you can dig again. Health indicator. If you deteriorate your health, you can't recover re re uh, energy as fast. The way you would do that is by drinking too much alcohol or cheap alcohol. As far as I know, I think that's the main way. I can't think of another off the top of my head. And then comfort is made up of basically um, the weather conditions and players equipment. So different areas of the map might make you less comfortable in the marshes or in the dark forest, but the comfort will be higher when you're standing next to a campfire. And that also affects your energy regeneration. Uh, they just introduced chairs into the game. Chairs give you comfort, 5% um, comfort bonus. You know about the experience indicator, the compass and navigation. Uh, is This shows you these other and describes them, other things you see when you are looking at the main screen in the game. All right, so the last section I want to look at before we start this trip to copper is about ground bait. To attract fish, you need to make some ground bait and deliver it to the fishing spot. Dry mixtures as well as boilies or pellets. The usual mixture is a classic vicious mixture for balls and feeders. The main components of ground bait is the base that can be mixed with additives and attractants. The dry mixture is one that doesn't contain any liquid components. It is used in PVA rocket feeders. A dry mixture may be made without a base, so you don't even have to use the base. In order to make ground bait, open uh, control panel, click ground bait button. Crafting recipes, it talks about that. As your first ground bait, choose the simplest and cheapest mixture that is good enough to attract the carp or common roach. Crucian carp mix is ground crackers plus millet porridge. Roach mixture has ground crackers plus blood worm. It's funny because it doesn't mention what the attractant is in either one of those. So uh, sunflower, sunflower oil goes with crucian and caramel goes with the roach. Casting the ball with your hands. So you can just throw the ground bait in with your hands. It's the least effective method because you can't cast the ground bait at a long distance and it makes a lot of noise that can scare off fish. It's telling you how to pick it up. 
With fishing with bottom rigs, you can put it into the feeder. Feeders are used with usual ground baits. It also says ground bait can be cast with a special rocket feeder, which provides a larger portion and longer distance of delivered ground bait. SPOM is a fully closed rocket feeder, long distance, opens when hits the water, small spot ground bait delivery. It's effective if you're using large ground bait. SPOD is an open type rocket feeder, leaves a trail and is efficient when you're using small fractioned ground baits. PVA is something you make at higher levels. So this is getting into more and more specific and advanced stuff. I do recommend, again, I'm just the point I'm trying to make here, it is worth reading this user guide as you're fishing, as you're getting more and more into the game. There is so much valuable information in there, and I just want to highlight it every once in a while. Okay, I think we're ready to start. So the goal here is when we start, go to our fishing spot, get our rods out with some sort of bait and carp one ground bait, and then we will... Um, then we'll start trying to get a, a feel for what's going on. All right, let's go. It, by the way, if we have lots of options, my first choice is going to either be to use corn or corn, honey dough, or potatoes. I, I think those are like all S tier that I want to try first. Maybe, a, maybe using each of them. We'll see. I, I don't know exactly what baits we're going to get, but that's what I'm assuming. All right, here we go. Five day tour. We're going for 0.45 gold, about 75 cents. No, less than that. What would we? What did we say? Less than 50 cents. Here we go. All right, now we're traveling. The time has started. The clock has started. Here we go. All right. Uh, okay. So you see the airplane. That shows that these are the equipment we got with our trip. Now we're holding them all in slot one, two, three. I have no idea what's on them, but I'm gonna take us, okay, there's no bait on there. I'm gonna take us to our the spot that I told you we're gonna fish at, at least first, which is right over here. We're gonna go 10 meter clip and we need to choose a bait. All right, let's see what we got have going on here. Did they give us uh, lead cores? They did not give us anything for our, our ground bait. So we're gonna have to purchase those. We can take one off of our existing rod. All right, we have large four hooks is the only hook they gave us. And here's all of the baits they gave us. Um, and we want to go with, so we, it's, it's only dough, only dough. Uh, we already had these worms. So based on these choices, we wanna go with uh, honey dough. We'll try honey dough first, 10 meter clip. I think I'm actually gonna put, all right, let's just cast it straight out. And now second one, let's also put, let's see, let's try pearl barley, 10 meter clip, retrieval speed, let's get that up there. Let's cast it out there. All right, let's uh, release this so it's not so awkward looking. All right, there we go. And then first of all, let's go to our rod, which is a feeder right here. Let's take this off so that we can put it on this one and then we're gonna purchase it. How much this way? 70 grams, the test is 18. So we're actually gonna be under casting here. All right, carp one, bait, let's go with um, honey dough, garlic dough, egg dough, semolina. I think I'm leaning towards honey dough, but we'll try everything, I guess. But all right, 10 meter clip. Let's just get this sucker out there. All right, we have a fish on. I think it's rod one. We'll see what the first fish we catch here is going to be. Common roach. It's like we never left mosquito. All right, so that was on, I don't like how um, tight they are here. It's actually hard to stack them. Okay. All right, at least we're fishing. So 
So we don't have peas. Okay, so there are some things that I think we're clearly going to want to purchase to be able to try. I'm a little um, kind of surprised, I guess, that they didn't give us like potato, peas, corn. I mean, these are cheap baits that it wouldn't be hard to get. And, and you know, maybe these baits they give us, if you just give them a chance, maybe they will work pretty well. I do want to put some, I don't want to really throw the ground bait. I'd rather put them on cages. So we need to go buy some cages. Um, and since these have a test of 18 to 95, I think we should get at least like get 50 size. All right, no fish there, no fish there, no fish there. All right, let's go get them. Ah, oh, this is gonna be interesting. So how much silver do we have? 12. Unfortunately, like, I think we are gonna to have to spend some silver um, if we wanna test out things like corn, which I kinda of do want to do. We probably ought to just bite the bullet and get some. Thankfully, these um, sinkers, the feeder cages are very cheap. All right, there is a cafe here, stuff that we could catch. So we need to be checking the cafe. Uh, but let's get both the, um, both the feeders and try to get the bait as we wait forever for it to load. Okay, here we go. Feeders cheap ones i guess we'll get 60 so those are three each and then we should have enough to get some corn um corn is very cheap can we still afford potatoes yes barely okay i don't know if potatoes necessarily work great here potato is typically a good carp um bait but you know these carps are a little exotic a little different the carps here at copper so Maybe potato is not always the way to go, but let's at least get corn out there. All right, let's see what this is. First fish was roach on honey dough. Second fish on honey dough, also roach. We came a long way to catch roach, folks. All right, let's put some corn out here. Corn is going out. And this is on pearl barley. So let's see what pearl barley catches. You've got it. Common roach. And we just hit level 7, 4.7. We got some new line, which is fine. Uh, let's put on one of our feeders and let's put some carp one ground bait on there. Um, I'm willing to try something besides pearl barley. Let's try cornmeal porridge just for fun. Now that might be too slow a bite rate, but we'll see. So now we have corn, cornmeal porridge, and honey dough still. Um, hey, we're three roach in. You know, at this point, you gotta be asking the question, is this trip worth doing at this point when you can't use boilies? And that's a fair question. We've caught three roach. I do think it will get better. Um, we've got some experimenting to do. We've got some learning to do about which baits are gonna be the most consistent for us to catch a good bite rate and at least have a chance at catching some of the uh, more exotic carp and stuff because that's where it's going to get crazy if we can hit an f1 or something like the amount of xp and stuff that those are worth it's going to be really nice but we got to hit it first So let's say in chat, anyone using natural baits? We'll just ask, see if people respond. Okay. So no fish on. I think we do want to test potatoes at some point. I want to give everything a chance. I mean, if, if cornmeal porridge doesn't catch a fish and it's like been five or 10 minutes, then okay, maybe we should, should wait. Um, I'm using cream.
All right. So far, very slow. I guess I could be scrolling through. Um, oh, I tell you one thing we can do. All right, this is next level. If you go to a site called RF4 Stats, I'll let you look that up yourself. It does pull up if you Google search it. RF4 Stats. Can we go to Copper Lake? I think they do have it. Yes. All right. And let's see, are the fish species loaded in? Um, yeah, let's search by fish, not by bait. All right, so it looks like the fish types still are not loaded in. Um, we still do not have a fish on. I just wanted to see if we could get some information about what baits are working. Uh, okay, so like here's Tench. I'm looking at Tench. Baits that have worked. Okay, Honey Dough is on this list. Uh, dice Cheese and Corn Seeds. Now you can tell from the way that there's two on there that somebody float fishing. Worm, bloodworm, so not alive, but now that's just tench. The problem is this site hasn't quite loaded in all the new types of fish. All right, honey dough. Honey dough is coming up. Corn is coming up. Uh, again, it might typically be on float fishing, but at least it is a, a bait that sometimes is catching other fish. Look, we've caught another roach, 687 gram, and that was on honey dough. From what I'm seeing, I don't, honeydew is not really the bait that I want to take off yet. Oh, I forgot to put the uh, feeder on there with our ground bait. That's okay. All right, so yet another roach. You would think that uh, all you catch at copper is roach. All right, let's look at some other fish. Again, these fish are um, unidentifiable, but, you know. All the fish here are nice. So dice cheese shows up again, cornmeal porridge. Again, float fishing, but still could work. Um, corn seeds and cottage cheese dough could be a thing. Somebody just called a trophy common roach. All right, what about the third fish down from the top? Anything new? Uh, cottage cheese dough with diced cheese, red worm with honey dough. Okay, pea by itself. Maybe pea is worth trying. I'm wondering if corn and peas might be both worth trying. I think peas are pretty inexpensive as well. Another bait that we didn't get for free on the trip, but we could certainly add it to the list. And then if we go down to the next fish, I mean, the problem is like, Okay, garlic dough shows up there. Honey dough is showing up a lot. Corn, potatoes, corn and potatoes together is showing up a lot. I'm not learning a whole lot here because it seems like most of the information is from people, you know, um, float fishing. So they're doing sandwich baits and all kinds of stuff. All right, here's probably a more rare fish. Corn doubled up. Yeah, nothing, nothing in terms of, nothing in terms of um, anything that looks like something that would benefit us really right now. We are four fish in. So the next thing I can start to do is look through either Discord or VK site postings just to see like, okay, what's another spot we could try perhaps? Um... Okay. I really want corn to work. 
clearly cornmeal porridge and corn are both too, too slow right now, but we're going to take this one off. We've got to at least try potatoes. So we will try potatoes here. And what we may be discovering is we may want to wait for our next five hour trip to copper. Wait until we've unlocked boilies. That may be the lesson we're learning here, but I, I mean, I think we can we can try to make the best of it. We'll try some different spots eventually, but this is a very active spot on copper. And yet for us right now, it's not producing. It's almost not producing anything. So uh, but let's try potatoes. Like I said, we'll maybe get peas. Uh, maybe we should just try putting like, you know, worms on or something a little bit just to see. I mean, at this point, we could try to catch just like normal mosquito lake fish, which overnight we might should switch to another spot and just try to catch um, rough uh, or even bream or whatever during the overnight hours. And I can kind of show you that where that spot might be. It's this one here, like, I don't remember the clip, but it's a little bit longer clip. Garlic dough. So we need to check. I mean, we don't have any silver right now, but when we get a little silver, we need to check. Maybe the small hooks will be in stock here. That's one advantage of coming on this trip so early. We could definitely make some money by catching a bunch of um, rough at night. if we can get that going. We won't just helplessly uh, retreat to not doing anything. We'll keep trying as much as we can. So somebody just called a trophy F1 in chat right now, which it's amazing. Obviously without boilies, it is a little difficult. All right, I think we're getting a fish on the middle rod. We definitely do not want to mess that bite up. We want to see if we can be patient. Oh, now we're getting... So this could have been a time of day thing, by the way. Um, all right, definitely we've got a fish on corn. What did we catch on corn? Finally caught something. It's a very small mirror carp. All right, let me think. What else do we want to try? To be fair, we haven't tried so many things. Let's try cottage cheese dough. Not something I was thinking, but at this point, I think we should just be flexible, really try different things. All right, first fish on potatoes. Let's see what this is. Common carp. Hey, we're carp fishing, guys. I don't know if you noticed, but we are carp fishing. All right, let's see what this is on honey dough. Daggum roach. It's a big one though, to be fair. Carp one. All right, do we stay with potatoes? I think we do. But we should take this time in a minute to run up to the store and just see if we can answer the, the hook question. Okay, let's go really quick. Because how much silver do we have? 0.49. Were there any common roach cafe orders? <laughs> there is not. And unfortunately, there's not a uh, rough order right now either. But here's the all important question. 
first of all, if we had to, we do have 12 silver worth of fish. That's cool. Uh, but here's the question. Do they sell small, do they have small hooks in stock? All right, here we go. So we have to be level eight. It won't be too long till we're level eight. Now we could try it with twenties. Okay. By the way, both are in stock. I mean, that's huge for us to be able to buy three level, I mean, three 24 size hooks during this trip. I mean, that is a no brainer because uh, they're not in stock at low level spots, typically. What level are we? Level seven? We're one decent fish away from being level eight, and then we can go buy those 24 hooks, use them to catch a bunch of rough overnight, and at least make some silver. All right, this is a decent crucian. Bottom fishing is 5.7. Okay, so cottage cheese caught crucian. Let's try garlic dough. Garlic dough should work for bream. Okay, no other fish are on right now. So we'll get in, give it another few minutes. Once it's actually overnight hours, I think we're going to change spots just because even using boilies and stuff, this can be pretty slow on the overnight hours. All right, there is a fish on honey dough. Did we finally catch something besides a roach on honey dough? The answer is no, we did not. Another roach on honey dough. I'm really surprised by honey dough. And that's like surprised, not in the pleasant way. <laughs> now we could change our mind, but early return, first impression, I'm thinking maybe you want to go ahead and get your um, bottom fishing up to 35% to when you can at least fish with small sinking boilies before coming here. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just sort of thinking through it. Again, I reserve the right to change my mind, but early impression, it's like hard not to lean that way. There's another honey dough fish. The thing I kept waiting for is like, eventually the roach aren't going to really bite, but I mean, it's almost midnight. So let's, let's do our switch. Let's go try something here. All right. So you see how we have garlic dough on this rod? I think we're going to put garlic dough on all of the rods and see if this uh, bream spot is still active. Back when copper first came out, overnight one time I fished for bream just for fun. And this, uh, this little spot over this way was actually pretty decent. Um, and at least until we get the small hooks. Now, once we get small hooks, it might be better to eat, just go for rough. But I think it's like a, I don't know, I'm thinking like a 12 clip, something like that. So what we wanna do is from here. So now we're on this side of the lake, uh, on this pier at 5650. And we wanna go to a 12 clip. It might've been less, honestly, but we're gonna do garlic dough on all three. We're going to cast slightly to the right here and garlic dough slightly to the right. And 
This one already has garlic dough. Alright, let's see if we catch any bream from over here. still not level eight are we we still can't use we might as well just stay here we still can't use the 24 hooks and I'm not going to try to catch rough on 20s because I think it would just be slower than we want it to be relog on my main account which does mean we'll have to uh, drive back out to the fishing spot but all right that is a bream let's straighten it out a little bit here all right that's a marker and it's a bream Still have a ways to go, but uh, we're getting there. A little bream. There's a bream that's actually over a kilo. That's very nice. And that gave us some nice experience. So that's cool. All right, looks like uh, we've got a small one on rod one. I mean, every fish levels up our bottom fishing at this point, so we don't mind catching small ones. Let's just keep them going. Okay, let's see what we've got here on garlic dough. Middle rod, looks like barely a marker bream. Yeah, we'll take it. Might be a fish on rod three as well. Nope. Not yet. Maybe getting some nibble still on rod one, though. So, pretty slow. Now, who's to say that this ground bait we're using doesn't scare away bream a little bit? Eh, I doubt it does. It's uh, nothing really offensive on there. We're probably fine. Pretty slow. Let's look at the um, absolute records or the copper records so far on bream. Garlic dough, pea porridge, po diced potatoes, but mostly garlic dough. Just making sure I was using the right bait. I mean, I think garlic dough is the best bait for bream here so far I mean that will change with time I need to make sure I like mention that all the time in these leveling guides just because I'm fishing a certain spot right now that's working or not working it may be a totally different experience 
by the time you're watching this video, if you're not watching it like the day it came out or recently after it came out, spots do change over time, sometimes dramatically, and then they'll rotate back. But maybe it's a different bait preference this time or slightly different time of day. Or there's also, we've introduced weather into the game now. So if you look at the weather, it shows not only the weather of the place, but also the water temperature on the three cart maps, bare, amber, and now copper. So there's lots of factors that might explain why you could be having a slightly different bite rate or experience than I'm having at this point. So it's 4.24 in the morning. We're gonna give it just another few minutes and then we're gonna go get set up at, for carp again because carp should start biting uh, very soon. And as fun as it is to bream fish, we're probably getting a slightly better bite rate here. This isn't why we came to Copper Lake. We're just trying to piece together a strategy to, to do decent, decently well here. I think to start off with, I might do uh, honey dough on all three rods just to give that a minute or two to see how it works. All right, 61, 62, clip 20. What are they catching there? Nothing different than the spot that we're at. But we could try it. Fifty thirty six. That's more for the dinks and the super freaks. But I don't know that those guys like natural baits that much. That could be really slow down there. All right. Something's got a fish on. I really want to just like start with honeydew on everything. I don't know why. I, in my mind, honeydew was one of the baits that I thought could do pretty well here. And uh, so far that has just not proven to be the case. But I kind of just want to give it a good, a good attempt. We should really have a shovel. We, there's no excuse to not be digging but we don't have any silver yet, so that's the excuse. Uh, so yeah, nothing that we're really getting even close to on the cafe. We're still not level eight, so that doesn't matter. We could sell some fish to get peas, I guess. All right, let's just get some peas. They're also very cheap. We'll have just one more thing to try over here, but right now we're gonna try honey dough. Now this is another spot, like clip 20 right here. I, I, I wanna go back to our regular spot, see what morning bite is like over there. Let's don't give up yet. But if we need to try that other spot, we can. Again, you know, we've got some time left. We're not done with our first trip yet. In fact, we're just like, right at the first of five hours in probably something like that all right so honey dough we're going back down to a 10 meter clip we're gonna cast a little more left center and right okay We'll see what, if anything, this does. Well, looks like a nice quick, nice quick bite here. And it's a little common carp. The only problem with these little common carp on our little size four hooks 
is, I mean, they are level up, leveling up our bottom fishing, but they're not worth anything. You know, we haven't put any points in yet. I'm gonna put three points in making ground bait so that the next time we make ground bait, it'll at least be a little bit higher quality. And, oh, man, this is where it gets a little tricky. These are actually feeder rods we're using, so we could put points in feeder rod. Or we could just put points in spinning reel. All right, here we go, folks. This is why we came to copper. Honey dough, first legit fish here. What's the fish? I don't know yet, but it looks like a mirror cart maybe? Oh, I think it's a super freak. Wait, do the super freak like honey dough? We could go fish in that other spot then. All right, watch out. What level is this gonna bake us? We just went up to level nine, folks, with 13.1 XP. Holy cow. Sweet dough, size 16 hooks. And here's another nice fish on honey dough. And this looks like a regular mirror carp. There's level 10. Mayfly larva will take it. And there's a leather, a leather carp. So we're starting to see some more rare fish come in on the honey dough. Wow, that was exciting. That was very, very cool. So morning bite, not disappointing. I like the fact that we got this super freak, a 10 kilo super freak, by the way. Um, Yeah, that's cool. Okay, I'm gonna put one point into bait into uh, one point into harvesting. These two share each other. One point into harvesting so that we'll get more bait when we shovel. Wait, do I really want to do this? Actually, might not because we're doing so much carp fishing. Let's see how it goes. So I think we go back to bottom fishing and we'll put in, we've got six points. Let's put in three into fishing with a feeder rod and let's put in two into fishing with a, using a spinning reel. So there's some more points. That'll give us a little bit more control of fish, a little better accuracy casting, which doesn't matter at all on a spot like this where we're only casting a 10 meter clip as far as the casting goes. Now having more control of the fish, that could be big. I think that's rod three that has a fish. And that is just a little roach. Too soon, roach, too soon. Big roach.
So by the way, we're using Natura 6000s with 14.5 kilo line, no leader. We should probably buy some leaders. That might help our fishing, honestly. On a carp lake, having some carp leaders. I mean, I don't know. That seems a little weird. We should go look at that really quick. Even if we just have to buy like store-bought leaders, we don't have the tool to craft leaders, but that's fine. That's yet another thing that could possibly uh, help our bite rate. By the way, we are now making some silver. That's 65 quick silver. Oh yeah. Uh, nothing yet that works towards that though. Sometimes the store does lo load a little faster. What we're we doing here? Oh yeah, leaders, feeder leaders. And we wanna get cart leader probably the cheap kind 15.8 is a little big we can't use those because we're not high enough level uh we could try fluorocarbon what was it 14.5 monos honestly mono leaders are great for carp um yeah this is perfect so we could try these Or we lose a little strength and get these. I, I, this is what I want to get, but I just I don't like, I mean, I like how cheap it is. I don't like losing power though. So maybe we get the 15.8 and we let the line be the power, not the leader. At least we have leaders on. Those are the cheap way to go. We don't, we're not high enough level for those yet. Fluorocarbon is an option. What would be the fluorocarbon route? Well, we're not, we don't high enough level to use one. Okay, let's just get these. So one, two, three. I don't think you have to be a certain percentage to use leaders. I think we'll be okay. We do have fish on though. Multiples maybe. Okay, decent fish here. Hitting Z to zoom in if you're wondering. All right, now we have a carp leader on there. Nice crucian. So apparently you have to be certain level for suck for like regular old school tasks maybe, is that why? Some of these are suddenly popping up. I'm not sure, but maybe. All right, we also need to add one to the third line, but we'll wait till we have a fish on there. So I think we have to get, well, have to is a strong word. There are these feeder kits that are that cost 149 silver. And in normal RF4, without doing these kinds of like trips at the beginning, you would normally be saving up for those so that you could use those kits to fish for bream. 
I still think we need to get those kits for when we're not on a trip, those feeder kits will give us a lot more options of what we can target than those starter ones. And even though we did buy one starter one, this, uh, not this one, this uh, Sorrento, we got this one in the first episode just to kind of show you how to use this and what to, um, you know, how to get going with things. However, I don't think we buy any more of these as long as we can make enough silver to get those, at least a couple of those other kits in this first trip to copper. I can't believe I'm questioning whether or not we could get enough silver to buy those kits in our first trip, but that just shows you how different the silver is using natural baits versus boilies at least so far now if you all have used natural baits here and can have some like teach me some things feel free to leave those things in the comments because again i've had access to boilies on my main account so when i did fishing at copper before the challenges came out it was all on boilies and stuff like that i haven't done any testing with these natural baits till now there's a nice uh crucian carp all right, so let's switch to P. I wanted to try P. Let's put P on at least one rod. We'll keep honeydew on the other two since we at least did get some decent fish on honeydew. We have some help, some hope about honeydew. We are at 9.9% .9 on bottom fishing now. That's the middle rod. It's cool that on this trip they actually give you the three different bells so the sound starts to teach you like okay which rod is it based on which sound it is. Oh my goodness I just thought of something. They give you a freaking rod pod. For the trip, they give you a rod pod. All right, we put put the leader on this one since we haven't yet. Is there a fish on this? I hate to mess up a bite, but it doesn't look like there is. All right, so two things I wanna do here. First of all, we're gonna get the rod pod out and we're gonna set it down. Then we're gonna to go to details. This one does not have, this is the cheap one. So I have not used this one before. Um, so this is kind of cool. So you keep the, the bite alarms on this one because it doesn't have its own alarm system on there. Are we keeping the same? Oh, okay. We're gonna to change to carp two ground bait. Carp two ground bait is engaged. You set it down on the rod pod the same way that you would set it on the ground, except if you step forward, it creates less slack in the line when you set it down. Carp two is engaged. All right, so there we go. Now we're fishing with a rod pod. It doesn't give you a chair, does it? Nope, no chair, but that's cool.
a lot easier to keep your rod straight and not on top of each other when you set them on the pod like this. All right, so we are, it says four days left. I don't know if it can tell you exactly, but we are, we've been here right about an hour. We did sell fish once, but we did a little better in the morning. We'll have to remember that, how much better morning time is in this spot than the afternoon was, at least yesterday. Hopefully we'll see a couple more fish here before we call it, but we are getting close to calling it since this video is now going to be well over an hour. That sounds like the, th actually, I'm not sure. Trying to remember what bell, what bell sound that was. Looks like there's not a fish on yet. Is there a bait that I should be thinking about that's like staring me in the face that we're not using? Should we ever just try bread? I mean, sometimes carp like bread. I don't know about the fancy carp that are here, though. I mean, that's what, you know, we want to catch more stuff like this super freak. Not just that, though. There's all kinds of cool things in here. I don't want to spoil them because hopefully we'll catch them eventually. But we just got to figure out, do any of the natural baits actually target them? This might be the first fish we catch on P here. I don't think we've had one yet. Never mind, we did have a roach on P. And that's the problem with pea, just like pearl barley and some of the other baits we've tried here. Roach really like it, and it seems like roach are pretty active in this spot. So, And if it was like, you know, if we were killing it on roach, that would be one thing. Another thing I might try next session is just using crucian gibble ground bait so you know we made our own ground bait mix carp one and carp two which those might be fine but just in case i might just do crucian gibble gar carp mix next time because at least that's targeting a specific carp even though it's the small variety it still like should be in the same family we can't use this yo know, we can do most of that we could just add a different attractant we actually can make it without the base right can we make garp carp ground bait without the base i think you have to have a base right yes you have to have a base but this is basically what we're using except we added millet porridge maybe we should just do this except use semolina instead of ground peas that could be carp three maybe that should be carp three all right looks like we've got a fish on on honey dough over here just a small crucian All right, that's definitely the middle rod. That's the P rod. All right, let's hope this is a decent fish on P. That would be encouraging. Uh, it's a common carp, but it might be our first marker common carp. It is. That is. Oh, is that a tench? 
Actually, not a huge surprise. We know that Tench like honey dough. It's probably one of the many reasons why honey dough is at least worth considering in terms of natural baits here, because such a wide variety of things will go for them at times. All right, finally a fish on rod one. After it had been a while. At least a nibble on rod one. Oh, it looks like there is a fish on. Is it there already? Yeah, just a small roach or something. Okay, I think we should just go ahead and wrap this up. So let's get our rods out of the water so nothing weird happens. Like we see that we have a fish on and freak out and have to come look at it again. Okay, so I think we double check that there's no new cafe orders. I don't think there will be. And then I think we just sell the fish, be happy with our probably about 70 silver at that point and say, hey, we, li we lived, we learned some things. I do think next time it might be worth trying this spot out. I'll be curious if anybody has any suggestions on baits, things to try. I'm all ears. I do want to catch some F1s. We just haven't been able to hit them yet. Trophy perch, that's interesting. And I don't know if there's like a good, look at all these trophy orders. Four kilo tench, trophy perch. I don't know. All right, let's see what we did. Yes, oh, 78 silver. Look at that super freak. Look at that mirror carp and the tench. The tench is what helped there at the end. So that's 78. That actually gets us up to just about 100 silver. So we're good, right? I mean, that's like, we probably made over 100 silver. We had already sold fish. So in our first hour, it cost, how much does this trip cost if you pay silver? Uh, it cost 300 silver. You're at least going to make money using this guide <laughs> and hopefully a lot more silver. But the most important thing is we're having fun, right? That's what matters most. All right. Thanks for joining me for episode two. And I will see you again soon. Tight lines.